So I want to go to Yashwant first on this perception that Prime Minister Modi's stature has increased globally. The immediate next question, even though foreign policy isn't directly linked to domestic politics, will all of what we're seeing in the G20 give the PM and the BJP a bump in the looks of elections next year? What's your view? I think the bump comes from the overall confidence or overall feel-good factor, if one may say so. So all these foreign policy uh, uh, issues, all the good things that are happening, including Chandrayaan, if one may add so, you know, it's not about taking the credit. It's not about whether or not they will make any difference as far as the Lok Sabha elections are concerned, Rahul. I think it will just probably add to the feel-good factor of the good things in general that people might be thinking that they are watching under uh, Mr. Modi's uh, rule. Uh, having said that, let's be very, very, uh, uh, you know, honest here on this one thing that, you know, public has been very, very open and critical about the government and the things where they feel that the government has failed. So in this same poll, there are things which the public has said very clearly. This is not something which the government has done right. We are not. But overall, they are very clear. They are looking at the prime minister who is working hard. They appreciate that the prime minister is going out of the way to, to, to take India to some positioning at the global level, which okay. they feel they haven't seen in recent past. Vijay and they are appreciating that. Interestingly, 47% of the respondents seem to think that the G20 presidency will enhance India's global stature because of the manner in which so many G20 events were done nationwide, so many cities, so much people's participation. That message seems to have gone home because usually it's just a summit meeting, leaders come and go. But because of the kind of energy and equity that the Prime Minister and the government have invested in G20, is that something that you're doing purely from a foreign policy lens or are you you know, in a subterranean fashion, also hoping to benefit electorally. Rahul, one thing is very clear that any aim of the foreign policy can be appropriate projection of India as a whole country to the global audience. And G20 is a very opportune time to do so, which Prime Minister Modi his government and the entire Indian people have done it very meticulously by such a massive planning and very impeccable execution of more than 200 events. And most importantly, it didn't remain only a Sarkari event, but also a lot of Janabhagidari, what Prime Minister Modi calls it, people's participation. And it is but natural that all these effects uh, will have a positive effect in the minds of uh, Indian uh, voters, and it is being reflected in your opinion poll. So I am not you know, at all surprised by this. Uh, Salman says generally foreign policy had a bipartisan consensus. That consensus seems to have broken down in recent times, whether it's on China, on, on other contentious issues. There's a general sense that the opposition is gunning for the government. Will G20 be different? Will G20 be an occasion in a way to celebrate uh, for the opposition along with the government or do you believe this is event management Narendra Modi style? Rajdeep, on foreign policy, I think, uh, you know, I, I don't agree that uh, uh, there isn't consensus. Of course, when it comes to foreign policy, whether you're from the BJP or the Congress, we're all together in this. And as far as the country is concerned, we have to look out for the national interest. And that is what all political parties ultimately want. As far as the G20 is concerned, I know uh, on, uh, in your poll, uh, uh, people, uh, you know, said, weighed in on uh, what it might mean. But frankly, you know it, I know it. Even I don't really know ultimately what the key goals of our presidency are, you know, so much less, you know, uh, uh, people who are just responding to your survey. So I think that's a complicated kind of uh, question to ask. But in the broader scheme of things, India uh, being the G20 president, that's of course a good thing. Of course, this is a routine thing. Indonesia was president before us. Brazil will be president after we, uh, after we are done. Now, but the, there are differences, and the differences don't have anything to do with foreign policy per se. They have to do with how the government is engaging and how transparent the government is with the people of the country. Because we, the citizens, have a right to know how 
you know, if there are any threats to our national security. Interestingly, and of course, the, the of work course, there, so, Rajdeep, is routine. You know, the Congress is trying to make the point, and Salman just slipped it in, that this is routine. Vivek Khadju, one, you can say that it's 20 countries, the presidency does rotate, and therefore, to that extent, Salman is uh, correct in saying that it's routine. Uh, but the Prime Minister gave Business Today an interview which comes out uh, tomorrow where he essentially says this will be the catalyst of a new world order. So he's not thinking of this as being routine. He's thinking of this as a pivotal moment in the arc of India's evolution as a major global power where he thinks this will be a springboard for what he's calling a new world order. So he's not thinking of this like Salman does as routine. Uh Two points, Rahul. One, I think we are in an era of the, what I would like to call the new diplomacy. And uh, uh, Prime Minister Modi uh, is using the instrumentalities of this new diplomacy extremely shrewdly and well, both to project India as well as to gain popularity. I think these are twin objectives, and he's achieving these substantially. Uh, this is, as you correctly noted, a rotational presidency. So to that extent, it was a routine issue, but he's transformed it far from routine by taking the G20 presidency events nationwide, and this was unprecedented. Now, the second aspect with regard to in this being transformative, to that, my own submission is that the overarching reality of uh, the present international order is the rivalry between China, a rising China, and the United States and its allies. In that process, India is trying to position itself as the voice of the global South. Now, this is not the first time in our diplomatic history that we've tried to do so. Earlier, the global south was called the developing world. And India, right from the time of Prime Minister Nehru to Indira Gandhi and later, was a major factor in the developing world. But Mr. Modi and his advisors have given this a new shape. And I think the difficulties that will come okay. in the uh, one more sentence, the difficulties that will come in the way of uh, uh, achieving, say, consensus on the Ukraine issue in the G20, they are seeking to bypass it by projecting India as the champion of the global south and raising the issues which are deeply concerning the global south, whether they be relating to the outcomes of the Ukraine war 